we push off from the shore into the muddy waters of the Severn, we begin an adventure to rival any other in the UK. True, it may lack the grandeur of the Scottish Highlands as a backdrop, or the dramatic cliffs of Pembroke or Cornwall, but that matters little as it makes up for that with the second highest tidal range in the world. Just a few days after this journey, a peregrine full moon produced a 14.7 metre high tide. Further up the channel, this would have set in motion the famous Seven Ball Tidal Wave, one of nature's most fascinating displays of power. Today, however, the moon is in its waxing gibbous phase, causing the tides to range between mean neap tidal range and mean spring tidal range. So we can expect to encounter tidal flows of 2 knots around the islands, and up to 2.6 knots off Green Down, should we happen to find ourselves out there around mid-flow. We arrive at Monkstone Lighthouse with the tide still on the ebb. The water covering the rocks is only a foot deep, making the climb to the summit a daunting prospect for a pussy like me. Go, that's the boys way down below. Okay, so here I am at the top of the lighthouse. It's a hell of a long way up. My hands are shaking as you can probably see because I really don't like heights. Uh, an interesting fact was this lighthouse was actually made in 1829, I think it was. The structure behind me, just the top part, used to be uh, made of cast iron, but these days it's made out of fiberglass. Um, I gotta get myself down. I have noticed a slight problem while we're up here. If you look behind me, can see flat home over there, that's not a problem. Can't actually see steep home and we can't see green down. So I'm not 100% sure whether we're gonna go there or not yet. And I get my ass back downstairs and I'm gonna go have a chat with the boys and have a little discussion about it. Right, just below my tootsies there is my boat, uh, which I gotta now get myself down to. Uh, the tower is 75 feet high in total. Uh, where I'm stood is just a little bit below that, but it's still one hell of a long climb. And I've actually got really stiff forearms uh, just from the, my nerves from trying to climb up here. So let's go get my ass back down. I'll feel a lot better once I'm there. Whilst on the top, I did notice a sign prohibiting access. Would have been more useful at the bottom of the ladder, as it's a bit bloody late once you're up there. So if you do come out here, it's probably best not to head up the ladder like me. Well, that's my health and safety bollocks done anyway. After a tense climb back down, I go climb in my boat, raft up with the boys, and discuss our options. <laughs> okay. Now, what I was thinking is, what do you want to do, because we can't actually see where we're supposed to be going. And we haven't got any bearings, and we can only just about see steep boats. So, uh, why haven't we got bearings? Because <laughs> you had a chat, you didn't bring it. <laughs> it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> Are you so, filming this now? I'm filming this, yeah. No, okay. So, uh, yeah, I thought we could either take a punt on where Breen down is and try and get there. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it clears up a little bit. Or we can Do just go really across the... Do you want to put this into your DVD? Yeah. This is how we see kayak. It's... Um... Have you done your five star assessment? The expert. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking we could just go to Steve Dome instead if you want. Which is a safer option. I mean it is supposed to clear up. Apparently the visibility according to the forecast is supposed to be good. Yeah. Uh, don't know what the hell they were looking at, but uh, I can see Steep Home, yeah, so should we have a safety plan B and go to Steep Home? I mean, well, I why, do, why do we go to Steep Home and make a decision when we get to Steep Home? Uh, you can. It's gonna, it's gonna take an hour to get to Steep Home. Okay, it's gonna be bloody hard work to get from Steep Home to Green Town, and you've got to come back. It's an extra six miles. <laughs> Which is a lot. I reckon if you want to go to Breen Down, just aim off 45 degrees. As soon as we start to see it, aim off a little bit more and work it out from there. You think? Happy? I don't give shit. It's, so, yeah. it's an adventure, yeah, go on then. Yeah, you've got one of them things, I mean. <laughs> a VHF for calling the Coast Guard? No, no we won't no. need that. I think between us, we've got enough equipment to get us out of 
really serious shit. Yeah, I think we'd be fine. I know roughly where it is because I've been out here before anyway, so... Uh... Alright then, green down it is then. Let's go. The paddle to Breen Down is 10.5 kilometres, 5.6 nautical miles in Old Money. We don't have a bearing to follow and we can't see Breen Down, but by the time we leave Monkstone Lighthouse we can see fleeting glimpses of Steep Holm in the distance. Despite the low visibility, previous experience from my many trips out here would suggest to me that a 45 degree angle left of Steep Holm Island will set us off in the right direction. The conditions are calm and the forecast would suggest improving visibility as the day goes on, so we don't feel that we're taking any risks with our decision. Avoiding the yachties, however, seems far more challenging and is making Chris a little nervous. As we draw near to Breen Down, the sea mist slowly starts to lift and reveal a carboniferous limestone promontory so island-like in nature due to the surrounding low-lying land that forms the floodplains of the River X. The rock that forms the promontory is a continuation of the Mendip Hills, and so too are the islands of Steepholm and Flatow. The forts on the down are from the Victorian era, and part of the Palmerston forts that were built to protect the approaches of the Bristol Channel. They were brought back into service during the Second World War, and used as a base for experimental weapons. These days, however, the down is a nature reserve owned by the National Trust, it's a site of special scientific interest due to the nationally rare plants that thrive there, as well as the remarkable geology. So it's half past 11, which is low water. It's taken us about two and a half hours since leaving Cardiff, roughly. Uh, but the tide's starting to go that way now, so we just need to get a move on and get our asses back over onto Steepbone for the next part of the, the trip. Good to go? As sea kayakers, you'll be interested to know that a very impressive tide race forms off the tip of Green Down as it reaches out into the Severn Sea, obstructing the already strong currents that reside there. Today, however, it's lovely and calm and near to slack water, so there'll be no drama as we leave the steep home. Okay, so uh, that's our next destination, just over there, we're heading for uh, Steepholm Island. It's about three miles, should take about 45 minutes I reckon. Let's go. Okay, so we're just approaching Steep Home now. Should be another 10 or 15 minutes, I reckon, until we get there. And then we're going to have a very, very well-earned rest. I'm going to have a jam and peanut butter wrap, which I'm rather looking forward to. And i got some chocolate buttons. And uh, I even got a cappuccino. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty looking forward to landing on the beach now and having something to eat. The word home derives from Old Norse, meaning island in an estuary. Looking at the islands, it's not hard to understand the rest of the name, steep and flat. The Norse names are appropriate as both islands have a history of notable Vikings, such as Vicky the Viking and Asherix using them as refuge, as well as pirates like Captain Jack Sparrow. Arr. OK, I may have made that last bit up slightly. Well, the names at least, as Vikings and pirates both have a history with these islands. Today the islands will provide refuge for us three Muppets, and I'm hoping to find booty in my lunchbox too. Um, okay, so we've made it to Steep Home. We've been paddling for about four hours now. Um, we're going to have a nice long break, eat some sandwiches. But we're not going to go for a walk on the island because it's owned by the Kenoff also a trust. Um, they're not really very welcoming to kayakers. I've uh, been kicked off here a few times, so this time we're just going to have a little break, have a chill out, and then slowly make our way over to Flat Home Island. So just over that way by there. It's another three miles, another 45 minutes. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of current with us actually, so we're probably going to have to ferry glide across, which will extend the time of our paddle, probably just over a mile, I reckon. <laughs> this is all i got to put up with. <laughs> As promised, we allow ourselves a good long break at Steepholm and refuel our slightly tired bodies. As we rest, we're treated to a rare glimpse of a seal, not that common a sight this far up channel, 
and it's only the third time that I've seen one here. And clearly you can see on here, Chris is really glad to get away from the modern world. <laughs> Leave all the technology behind. We chose to stay on the beach and rest, but if you'd like to explore the island, you will need to contact the owners for permission. I risk getting escorted back down to the beach. It's a bit rocky on the rugged northern side of the island and as you can see we aren't doing too well at avoiding the rocks. As we prepare to leave the shelter of the eddy, I tuck in tight to the rocks as I'm well aware of the strong currents on the western tip. Chris goes wide and is about to discover them too. Coming up on the end of the island and the flow as it goes around the island, it's almost like a river. I'm going to get... Woo! As I go across the eddy line, that's how much of a river it is. Here we've come to Rudder Rock, a series of three arches carved into the limestone cliff by the power of the sea. Above us you can see a searchlight post from World War II. Its construction buried the remains of a lighthouse built long ago by the Romans. There's a strong back eddy here and we use this assistance as we leave the island and head off on the three mile cross into Flathole. The tide is flooding now so we'll need to ferry glide using the islands as transits to keep ourselves on course. Here it's plain to see our ferry angle as we paddle sideways towards our destination of Flathole. <laughs> Got no snoozing. Okay, so we've made it to flat and it took us about 30 minutes, which is really good time because we were expecting at least 45 minutes uh, due to the steep angle that we had to ferry across the tides. Uh, the tides run in between 50 and 100% that we were coming across, so half an hour, yeah, we'll take that. That's uh, really good. Time to go have a little look around the island. Flathome's a brilliant location, its wardens are welcoming, it's abundant in wildlife and it has a rich history with many remains to be explored. The history of Marconi, I won't attempt to say his first name, is particularly interesting and put Flathome in the map with the world's first wireless transmission between the islands and Lavernock Point on the 13th of May 1897. The message sent in Morse code was, are you ready? 
personally I'd have gone with get the tea and bickies ready, you missed the trick there. The current lighthouse on the island was built in 1737, following the deaths of 60 soldiers the year previous as their ships foundered on Wolves Rock. The lighthouse was originally 21 metres high, but has since been raised several times to its current height of 30 metres. During my visit some conservationists were using mist nets as part of a bird survey. Here you can see a drainage basin used to collect rainwater by the islanders. Just below the Victorian cannon here is a Moncrief pit, forming a striking juxtaposition with the World War II searchlight post that overlooks three miles of open water to Steepholm Island. Here we have the cholera hospital. In July 1883, the steamship Cris Anglis left three seamen on the island, believed to be suffering with the disease. This affected the sales of vegetables grown on the island, so the inhabitants petitioned Cardiff Council for compensation for loss of income. However, the seed of an idea had been sown, and an isolation hospital was founded on the island and extended in 1896. Okay, so it's uh, 15.40 according to my watch. High tide is at 5.20, so that gives us roughly about an hour and 40 to get back to Penarth. Uh, the plan is to have, we've left it a little bit late because we want a slightly more easy ride, so we've chosen to go for slack water. So, uh, Dragon Crash, should we get on the water? Yeah! Yeah? Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> cool. I'll do, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> We took a good long break of flat home to allow the speed of the tide to subside and make our paddle back to Penarth a little bit more leisurely. But that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. I've really enjoyed today's paddle. For me it has pretty much everything. Tides, islands, open crossings, lighthouses and adventure. Here we can see Mr. Evans guiding us across a sea of dodgy graphics to some equally dodgy music to explain the route that we took. I'll see you next time. Since making this film I have relocated to Sardinia and am running guided trips along the stunning coastline of Olbia. Sardinia is the second largest of the Mediterranean islands and the landscape around Olbia is a sea kayaker's paradise with beautiful islands, towering limestone cliffs and idyllic sandy beaches with crystal clear water. There's something here for beginners and experienced paddlers alike so why not get in touch at www go see kayak.com and make Sardinia your next holiday destination. <laughs>